So, if you could bring back any monster from Old Who, why would you bring it back? I would bring back the Quarks. Yes. Because I absolutely adore them. I think they are a quintessential 1960s clunky robot. But there's something about that spiky head and the, the weird sort of childlike giggling that they get together. I, I, I love them. Um, yeah. I, I, bring them I used to love them in the TV comic comic strips when they become a, a major villain against you know, the Doctor. And I think they had a huge amount of potential. And um, there was one on stage at a convention I did a couple of weeks ago, and it looked great. Um, and I thought, you know what, they, they've come back really well. It's hard, isn't it? Some of the ones I, I, would, I would like to have brought back have already come back. Um, I don't know. As I said, my favourites were the Sea Devils years ago, but the, it was the old, old ones, no disrespect to Robert's new version, I mean, or to the point that actually it's got the best head, but I always wonder why they, they dressed them up. I loved the fact that they, they really looked like they'd been under the sea for a long time and they, they just were dressed in fishing nets or whatever. And they're very effective. Um, so for me, it would be somehow bringing things like that back, but, but really retaining some of why they kind of worked in the first place. I have a theory of the sea devils that the reason they worked, the, there's something about, you know, I used to go to a beach on Berwick. Yeah. And on a, a winter's day on Berwick, I could imagine the sea devils coming out of the water and maybe putting in a distant time and place as effective and fun as that is. <coughs> For a little kitty, it's that a fact of that. It could be me on holiday. It could be this. Yes. It could come out of the water. And yeah. it looks like the cold British beach that I'm freezing yes. the, yeah. you know, off in, in there. And it could be like these things could be coming out. And I think there's a bit of that. It's like the Yetis in, in the, the underground. It's that familiar setting really worked. It, it does. I suppose with them, they also look, I mean, I suppose you often, you, 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 I don't know how often one would go to the beach, sometimes you see a dead bird or something on the beach and they kind of look a bit ratty and, you know, it's, it's a horror. They old sea devils always look, they always remind me of things like that. They feel like they've been, like they, they look like they smell awful as well. And they just look brilliantly kind of fishy and underwater and stuff like that. And I, I'm always, I was just in my mind sometimes, it's like when these things are updated, it's almost like the, some element of the point of them is missed and, it, and they're taken into a slightly different direction. These, I think, are incredibly clever. I mean, the, the ones in the 80s were very weird in, in like kind of samurai outfits. I don't know what the thinking was there, but um, it's kind of, I mean, you know, it's just random, isn't it? But it, it I suppose that's the thing for me. I, I can imagine when, when things are updated and you're given the opportunity, you want to put your own stamp on it. I think, to me, it would be wonderful, if you could, to bring something back and really try and nail what it was about it that, that worked so beautifully in the first place. Yet, as you, you mentioned, they always look very, you know, they're quite real because they look a bit knotted and right, because they were what they were. and. I can't imagine if they came back now, they'd probably be, I don't know, brushed. What would Rob do if he brought the water back? Them, you know, beautifully brushed and things like that. <laughs> Make what? They like? get it. Oh, they get it? No, they, 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 but they've got a lovely silhouette, as, as we were talking about the, the silhouette. And what I love about the Yeti is it's not an obvious yeti shape it's it's a shape that that is unique to a doctor who yeti um but in terms of things i'd bring back well first i thought well maybe the mutants and then thinking about it they were so well realized by jim atchison in the first place there's not that much i would change except maybe give them a bit of movement in the face some blinks and that kind of thing but I think the, the ones that would be quite fun to update would, would, would be the Zabi to make it a much more flexible costume so it's not kind of rigid right through from the head to the tail. Um, I think that, that would be quite a nice thing to do a reimagining of. That would, you reckon that would be like a CGI thing? I mean, a little thing, because obviously it's got man's legs, isn't it? But if it had 
little thin legs and yeah. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you can use CGI to enhance the costumes and fake legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just jumping off, off from Doctor Who, it just reminded me because he's sitting there on the corner of the stage, but Yoda in um, The Empire Strikes Back is a fantastic puppet by Stuart Friedel mm -hmm. and beautifully puppeteered by Frank Oz. And then all the Star Wars prequels, whether they've done him as a new puppet, and I know, I know the sculptor who did the new puppet, and he's a very, very clever man, but he never captured quite what Stuart Freeborn did. And then the CG version, he turns into Sonic the Hedgehog, and bounces on the screen. And then when they do the films, the new sequels, it's like, why does Yoda look so good in those? And it's because they went back and they dug out the original plaster moulds that Stuart Freeborn had made for Empire, and the guy who did them said, you can see all the discrepancies and asymmetricality that's in the sculpt. And he said, without that, getting that right, it's a different character, it's a different puppet. And only by going back to the original moulds, because his ears go in different directions, and he's, you know, there's something about him, this, this Albert Einstein, you know, crossed with a pixie, that got, <laughs> They got it so right the first time round, and nobody's got it right since. And I think it's a testament to Stuart Freeborn that they actually went, well, the only way we're going to get him right again is to go back to the original moments. <laughs>